um, a few n notes before we start. Um, we will be singing Were You There um, during, during the actual message. I will sing verse 1, and you folks get to sing 2 and 3, and then I will sing the fourth one. And the fifth one we will leave until Easter Sunday. It's number 228 in your purple hymnal. As you could tell from the readings, um, I took them from Peterson's The Message, a paraphrase that he did quite a few years ago, uh, became very much a favorite of Larry's and mine, as well as Joyce's. And um, so that's where all of the readings came from this morning. I'll be reading Mark 14, 3 through 9. Listen closely to the word. In only two days, the eight-day festival of Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread would begin. The high priests and religion scholars were looking for a way they could seize Jesus by stealth and kill him. They agreed that it should not be done during Passover week. We don't want the crowds up in arms, they said. Jesus was at Bethany, a guest of Simon the leper. While he was eating dinner, a woman came up carrying a bottle of very expensive perfume. Opening the bottle, she poured it on his head. Some of the guests became furious among themselves. That's criminal, a sheer waste. This perfume should have been sold for well over a year's wages and handed out to the poor. You notice that was a rich person saying that probably. They swelled up in anger, nearly bursting with indignation over her. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why are you giving her a hard time? She has just done something wonderfully significant for me. You will have the poor with you every day for the rest of your lives. Whenever you feel like it, you can do something for them. Not so with me. She did what she could when she could. She pre-anointed my body for burial. And you can be sure that wherever in the whole world the message is preached, what she just did is going to be talked about admiringly. That is the word of the, of the Lord. A woman of no mystery. So just hang on to your seats, folks. Don't you think it's rather funny for a grown woman to act this way? Crying and carrying on about a man. A man I've only known a short while, but one I've grown to love. I mean, I'm one of those women who have known lots of men, and for only one reason. Scorned and ridiculed and burned by the good folks, even though I have a thriving cloth business, they discount that. They only see me entertaining those men. In fact, they don't know me at all. Let me tell you something about myself. Something you might not know. I come from a little town in Galilee called Magdala, near the Sea of Galilee. Father was a fine cloth merchant, and I learned the trade from him. That's what happens when you're the eldest in a family of all girls. Don't you just know Father spent many hours bemoaning that fact in Temple? <laughs> He did say I had a good head for figures and for business, so I might as well take advantage of it. The travel was interesting, I learned much, and met many others in the business, men. Eye contact was necessary when dealing, and I, so I seldom covered my face. So what's a girl to do? One thing led to another, 
as you might well guess, and it soon became apparent to Father that marriage to a rabbi was out of the question and no good Jewish boy would have me. So he managed to set me up in Capernaum in a branch of the family business. Really it was to get me out of the way. <laughs> so as to preserve his good name and the reputation of my sisters. Many men wanted to talk, but most were just interested in my body. A few were in the cloth trade, but most were just men. The cloth trade really ran itself. I made my living with my body. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? For the past three years, I'd been hearing fantastic tales about a rabbi who was going about doing miracles and being hailed by many as the Jews' deliverer. At first, I discounted these magic tricks, and this deliverer had been predicted when I was a girl, but nothing had come of that. There surely was no one around to alleviate the suffering and oppression of my people that I could see. Nothing in the future either. Many of the Roman soldiers were my customers and I would have heard if anything was afoot. You can be sure of that. Back to my story. I went to a wedding in Cana two, no, three years ago. This man, Jesus, was there. He didn't look like a magician, that was for sure. I didn't know anything about him, but the wine was plentiful and I went home late. No, not alone, but late. Then the strangest thing happened. More and more I kept hearing stories about him from people who were talking like they knew. People also, like me, you know, needing to be shown. Seeing is believing. All this time, for the past 20 years or so, I have been plagued by horrible and pain-filled aches in my head. The point, to the point, at many instances, I would lose control and become mean and tearful and distraught and scream and throw things and cry uncontrollably, just like I had lost my mind. Nothing seemed to help except drink, and when I drank, the men came. The seven devils had a good hold on me. The aches in my head combined with the ache to not be who I was. Last week, I met a woman at the well who told me that she had been ill for 12 years, but that Jesus, yes, that, that same Jesus, that Jesus had cured her when she touched his tunic. Too many stories, too much drink. This was, this was entirely too much, too hard to believe. I asked her if she knew where he was, and she said he was preaching near Gebeah. Were you there when they crailed him to the tree? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Nailed him to the 
tree. I found him. He was much thinner than at the wedding. Well, of course, you fool, he would be older. But he looked, he looked different. Somehow, almost mystical. I mean, he had sort of a, sort of a halo around him that did not dissipate when he moved or even when one of his followers or one of the disciples came close to him. It was strange. I was strangely drawn to him. Watching him, I was quieted. And to my amazement, he came to me and looked into my eyes. And then he spoke. And I felt his voice take the pain from my head and the heat from my body. I could feel the devils leaving me as he spoke. Were you there when the spears him in the side? Were you there when they pierced him in the side? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they pierced him in the side? I was new, like a springborn lamb, as an opening bud. I gathered my cloak and whatever it was I had with me. I didn't know why then, but I felt I wanted, no, I needed to be with him. No matter where he went, I had no illusions. My former life quashed whatever ones I might have had, but I needed to be with him. Interestingly enough, there were other women who traveled with him too. Joanna, his mother Mary, Susanna, two or three others. Joanna and Susanna had money, which helped all of them get by. I put in what I had. The disciples, there were 12 then, just didn't accept me at first until Judas made a remark about my former occupation. Did Jesus and Peter put him in his place? He stayed away from me after that. I know I shouldn't think it, but good riddance. Shifty eyes, that one. Jesus keeps talking about fulfilling the prophecy and doing his Father's will. He is so wrapped up in his work, it, it seems to be he can't get it all done be, before. It's almost as though his life is coming to an end. But that's not possible. You see, I haven't told you the most important thing of all. I love him. Me, you say, me, prostitute, unclean, devil-filled, sinful me. Oh, yes. You see, I have changed. I am a new being. He told me so. And tonight, I feel so changed. I've just left them, all of them. Jesus too. They're having a meal in the upper room of Nathaniel's home, in secret of course, because, because Jesus is being sought by the Romans with the encouragement of those bigoted Pharisees and those hypocritical Sanhedrin fools. But I was able to be there for a while to, to help Martha serve the supper. And while there, I did something, something that surprised even me. I went to Jesus just wanting to thank him for healing me and having faith in me, and I felt I needed to show my thanks. 
I had been able to get a jar of nard, a very costly commodity, you know, ointment. I broke the seal and, and knelt before him and dipped my fingers into the jar and rubbed it on his feet. I could not speak, but looking into his eyes, I felt compelled to take my hair and wipe the ointment off. I began to cry and the tears fell into my hair as I wiped his feet. The disciples were incensed, but Jesus said, but Jesus said, he said, leave her alone. What she has done is a good work. She has done what she could. In truth, I tell you, wherever throughout the world where the gospel is proclaimed, what she has done will be told as well in remembrance of her. At that moment, I knew I loved this man, this Jesus, this, and I know it now, this Son of God. I believe this now with all my heart and mind and body, which I would give to this man. Fear not, I, I know it would not be possible, forgiven as I have been. Now, as I stand here, I tell you this unbelievable story, but hoping you will believe. I know you know love between us as man and woman is impossible, but you know as well as I do what will happen tomorrow to this gentle, wonder-filled, loving man. I can stand it. I can stand it because his word and the words of his father will sustain me. And he will return to us, to all of us who believe in him, in three days. Since ever there were women's hearts in this world, I will cry. I will weep. But I will be there when he dies. And I will be there when he returns. For he is, he is my Lord and my Savior. Were you there when they failed, when they s the sun refused to shine? Were you there when the sun refused to shine? Oh, 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 oh. sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when the sun refused to Kate, that was very, very heartfelt. Let's sing together number 69. 